The Honorable Deputy de Saint Leonard, Saint Leonard Saint Michel. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le, le Vice-Président, je m'excuse et félicitations sur votre nomination. C'est la première, première chance que j'ai pour vous féliciter. Alors, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise in debate on M312. Let me state that at the outset, I am proud to stand with my opposition colleagues in voting against this motion. Much of the discussion in this House has turned on the issue of debate. Namely, the Conservative member who introduced this bill insists that this motion does nothing more than foster debate over the definition of personhood in the criminal code. In reality, this is just a back door to reopen the debate over abortion in Canada, a debate that has been closed for many years. This issue has been laid to rest in the minds of so many Canadians, and frankly, I share the astonishment that we are again in this House needing to debate something for which so many women and men fought tirelessly decades ago. Le député de Kitchener Centre, le parrain de cette motion, insiste sur le fait qu'il voudrait tout simplement améliorer la définition juridique de l'être humain au Canada. Pour ce faire, cette motion préconise la création d'un comité spécial qui serait chargé d'évaluer le paragraphe 223-1 du Code criminel. En déposant une motion qui utilise un langage neutre pour faire état de la définition actuelle de l'être humain, c'est-à-dire une motion qui n'indique pas si le comité proposé euh, si le comité proposé devrait modifier ou maintenir le paragraphe 223-1 actuel. Le député peut maintenir que sa principale préoccupation est de créer des meilleures lois, mais ce n'est pas le cas. Le parrain de cette motion ne nie pas qu'il soit contre l'avortement, mais il a cadré la motion M312 comme étant une question de loi archaïque. Soyons honnêtes, une loi ancienne n'est pas nécessairement une loi déficiente. La loi constitutionnelle de 1867 a près de 150 ans. Pourtant, aucune parlementaire n'a tenté, pourtant, aucune parlementaire n'a tenté d'abolir la Constitution simplement parce qu'elle est ancienne. De même, le meurtre était illégal depuis longtemps, mais je ne crois pas que ce gouvernement, qui se dit « tough on crime », décidera de décriminaliser le meurtre tout simplement parce que les lois l'interdisent existant depuis fort longtemps. S'il croit réellement que le paragraphe 223-1 est archaïque, le député de Kitchener Centre devrait chercher à modifier ce paragraphe, plutôt que d'imposer à un comité spécial le fardeau de la recherche et de la prise de décision. Pourquoi utiliser des ressources financières par des contribuables pour que les, que les parlementaires tiennent un débat que la majorité, la grande majorité des Canadiens trouvent indésirable et même offensif? Pourquoi accepter ces termes de débat quand le parent lui-même a indiqué qu'il aimerait que la définition juridique de l'être humain englobe les fites et limitant ainsi l'avortement. Mr. Speaker, it's clear the member has ideas for how he wants personhood defined in the code. Why doesn't he just propose the change? Why doesn't he lay forward for all Canadians to see exactly what he wants to have us legislate? Instead of pretending, he is neutral and is doing this in the interest of making better laws. Truly, if the government were interested in better laws, it wouldn't have gutted the Law Commission of Canada. It wouldn't have closed the Court Challenges Program. It wouldn't insist on legislation that is unconstitutional. And just this week, we saw one of its statutes overturned by the Ontario courts. Mr. Speaker, the Criminal Code is in need of reform and cleaning. Indeed, on this whole topic of personhood, the Criminal Code still speaks of therapeutic abortion committees something the Supreme Court struck down in 1988. If he wants to make a better civil code, criminal code, why doesn't he propose to removing this relic that heartens back to a time when women didn't have a choice? Mr. Speaker, as a non-lawyer, I can't profess to be a great legal scholar, but I do understand that extending legal personhood, personhood to fetuses, the ultimate goal of motion M312, according to its sponsor, would jeopardize the status of abortion in Canada because it would grant legal protections to fetuses, such as the right to personal security. The question, of course, is 
where would the slippery slope take us? Would this mean outlawing abortion entirely? Would we also then limit what women can do while pregnant? Think about it. If we start down this path, we can easily see the same member coming back here in a few years to say, well, abortion is illegal, but now why don't we make it illegal for women to work in their last trimester? Mr. Speaker, where would this assault on the rights of women end? Canadian jurisprudence on the issue of fetal personhood is clear. A fetus may not be considered a person under existing law, aside from subsection, one, uh, subsection 223.1 of the Criminal Code, which clearly states that a, that a fetus is not a person until the moment of complete birth, and a number of Supreme Court decisions have indicated that a fetus cannot be considered a person in Canadian law. Mr. Speaker, it's no surprise to anyone paying attention that this government has been attacking our courts, limiting the power of judges through mandatory minimum sentences, reducing options for sentencing alternatives, but the law in Canada is settled here. And the only suggestion the member opposite can seem to muster up for trying, changing it is, well, it's old. That simply isn't good enough, especially when it comes to the rights of women. During the two, 2011 election campaign, the current Prime Minister promised that his party would not change the laws on abortion, saying, and as I quote, as long as I am the Prime Minister, we will not reopen a debate on abortion. We will leave the law as it stands. The Prime Minister should hold his party and that member to this promise. The Liberal Party does not support reopening the abortion debate in any way, and frankly, Mr. Speaker, it's a shame that we're wasting debate on this when Canadians are out of work, budget cuts across multiple sectors are putting the health and safety of Canadians at risk. There is lack of affordable housing, and many First Nation communities live in circumstances that are downright <coughs> appalling for a First World nation. Monsieur le Président, le whip en chef du, de, du, gouvernement, du gouvernement a déclaré qu'il ne voulait pas que les femmes reviennent à une ère passée où certains étaient obligés d'obtenir un avortement de façon illégale et dangereuse. Cela ne devrait jamais arriver dans une société civilisée. Pourtant, c'est ce qui pourrait arriver si l'avortement était criminalisé. On le sait bien. We should, not be turning the back. we should not be turning back the clock on women's rights. Instead, we should be making progress together for women, be it on pay equity, reopening the offices of state of women in Canada that were closed by this government, ensuring that affordable housing and child care options exist, and ensuring women are represented in public life through, ju ju judicial, through judicial appointments and the like. When the member from Kitchener Centre and his members talk about wanting to make better laws, why not solve issues relating to matrimonial real property for First Nations on reserves? Why not create a pay equity commission and tribunal, such as having been called for by the Native Women's Association of Canada? Why not reverse the old age security decision that will harm senior women who live longer than men and because of workplace discrimination may be in particularly precarious financial situations? Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a party fighting for the rights of women, not turning back the clock through backdoor attempts to reopen the abortion debate and through ret retrogressive policies that are prejudiced the majority of Canadians. Mr. Speaker, je m'attends que cette motion soit défaite et je voterai contre. Merci, Mr. President. Resuming debate.